right, guys, today we're gonna be discussing your top five considerations when buying a new or your first fishing kayak. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Logan, and thank you for watching as always. If you're a new viewer, make sure you guys go down and like and subscribe and do all those YouTube things that I'm supposed to tell you to do. If you're a, a, a returning viewer, thank you for the support. If you guys are watching this on Facebook, you guys can go down to the comments. I will leave a link to my YouTube channel, The Fishing Expat. You guys can go check out some of that stuff. An American living and fishing in Germany, in my kayak, from the bank, from wherever. So uh, that's all I got for you guys for that. So let's get into it. Top five considerations. If you're looking to buy a new or your first fishing kayak or just a kayak in general, I'm gonna discuss what I consider the top five considerations that you need to be looking at before you make your first purchase of a kayak. That way you're making sure you're getting the right one for you and what you need. So in no particular order, we're gonna start with number one. And that is gonna be where are you going to store your kayak? Where are you gonna, do you have a backyard you can put it in? Do you have a garage you can put it in? Do you have a storage unit or do you have a field or what? what where are you going to be putting your new kayak, okay? Me personally, I put mine in my garage. It's protected from, from the sun, it's protected from the rain, it's protected from my kids, it's protected from the snow, all of those sort of things. I keep mine in the garage, the truck that I transport this thing actually goes out in the driveway. My wife's car goes in the driveway, but the, the kayak, believe it or not, gets the garage. Priorities, I guess, huh? So that's where I put mine. So if you guys do not have a garage, if your wife will not let you put yours, like mine will, uh, uh, your kayak in, in the garage, where are you gonna put it? You can put it in the backyard. You could definitely put it in the backyard, but you need to get something to protect it. So do you have space to put it in the backyard? If you do, okay, good. That's, that's, a, that's a viable option but I would highly recommend getting some sort of car, uh, a tarp cover to protect it from, from the elements, from, like I said, rain, snow, sun, bugs, you know, rodents, rats, that sort of thing, getting in there, nesting, martens, all that sort of stuff. So get some sort of cover if you're gonna put it in, in the back. So where are you gonna store it? How big is your storage area? If it's in a field, you can get a, then, then you can put it wherever you want, right? You can get as big of a kayak as you want. You might be limited to the size of the kayak that by the by your storage facility by where you're going to store your kayak that leads us into number two what size kayak do you want to get this right here i have in the bed of my truck right now i was going to film in the water but it's incredibly windy it was getting blown all over the place i wanted to give you guys a nice steady thing to a nice steady image to look at so we're filming it in the bed of my truck right now this is my 2021 norman thunder kayak it's almost 14 foot, it's a big kayak, but again, I store mine in the garage. I got a big a big enough garage to store a kayak in there. So where are you guys gonna store it? So you know, maybe you don't have the big garage, right? So maybe you're limited, you gotta get a smaller kayak. Another thing to consider when you're looking at size, what type of fishing are you gonna be doing? Are you gonna be fishing big bodies of water? Or are you gonna be fishing small bodies of water? Are you doing both? 
Are you going to be fishing rivers? Uh, you know, those sort of considerations need to be looked at. I personally, if I'm fishing bigger bodies of water where I'm gonna be doing long treks and I'm out in the middle of the, you know, I'm out in the middle of the lake or I'm out in the middle of the reservoir, or I'm out in the middle of wherever, the ocean, right? Me personally, I want a big kayak. I want to feel safe. I don't want to get blown all over the place in a little, a, a smaller kayak. That's why I got this big kayak. I do a mixture of fishing. I fish in big reservoirs. I fish in small ponds. I fish all, all sorts of places. But I want to make sure that when I'm in a big body of water, I got a nice big kayak that's suitable for that. Again, that's my personal preference. Maybe if you're in a big body of water, you want a smaller kayak because then you don't have to worry about pedaling all over the place or paddling all over the place, whatever it is that you want to do. So that's another consideration. How are you going to be moving around? That's going to go into size. That's going to go into width, stability. These are considerations that you need to make when you're looking at, the, again, the size of your kayak. Bigger kayaks, more stable. Smaller kayaks, maybe not so stable. Do you want to be standing and fishing? Or do you not care? You can sit and you can buzz around in a little kayak. That leads us to number three. What type of, what style of kayak do you want? Right? You need to start looking at features in kayaks that you want. Right? So, for example, in this one. This is, a, like I said, a 2021 Norman kayak. It's a pedal drive. It's like, it's like riding a bike. I don't have to worry about paddling. I bring a paddle just in case something goes wrong. But check this out, guys. This is just like riding a bike. This is a pedal drive kayak. You sit down in the chair, you sit down in the, in the seat and you pedal. Maybe you want a pedal drive. Maybe you want a, a, a traditional paddle. What are you looking for in your features? Do you want a pedal drive such as this one that we discussed? Do you want a pedal drive? Do you want a traditional one? Do you, how much storage in your kayak do you want? Right? This one's got plenty of storage up front. It's got this storage thing. Do you guys bring a lot of stuff with you when you go fishing? You know? How much stuff do you... Look at it. Look at all the, the big compartment back there that I put. I can put a, I put a crate back here. I can even put... I could almost fit two crates back in here. Because like I said, I like a lot of stuff. I like to have a big kayak. I like to put all my stuff in there. I bring a, a ton of fish. I bring way more stuff than I need typically way more stuff than I need. Are you guys like me? Do you do the same? I, I bring a lot. I bring, a, I bring a whole bunch of stuff when I go fishing. I use hardly any of it, but I have it just in case. Some of the features that you want to look at, does it already have rail systems installed or do you want to install your own rail systems? Mine already had them installed. I didn't have to install any rail systems into this. The big reservoir in the back so I can put my crates. Do you, do you want a crate? Rod holders. This one's got plenty of rod holders back here. It's got a dry box back here to put my keys and my phone and all that sort of stuff. It's got these these rod holders, do you care about that stuff? You know, how many, this is the thing's got, I think six rod holders in it, plus I've added some. So maybe look, start looking at some of the features that you want. That's step, that's, that's consideration number three. Look at the features, find stuff that fits how you want to fish. If you don't need it, then you don't need it. Don't worry about it, look at, it, look at something different. So that's number three, features. What type of rudder do you want? Do you want a rudder that's mounted on the bottom, in the back? This one's got a, a rudder that's mounted in the back that I can drop, you guys can see that. And I just drop that down and I got, and, and that's the rudder system, right? Or maybe you don't worry about that. Maybe you just want to paddle. Maybe you want to, maybe you're doing it for exercise. You can paddle around, fish, sit, that's it. This one is incredibly stable. It's wider. It's another feature. Okay. Number, number, that was number three. So we have storage, size, features for number four. Let's start looking at budget. What is it? Maybe you don't care. Maybe you'll buy whatever. Maybe you're only looking to spend a thousand bucks, less than a thousand bucks, right? That's going to start. Look, once you've once you've recorded size, storage, budget, and features, now you've started to narrow down what you're looking at, what type, what, what brands you're starting to look at, what style of kayaks, big, small. You've started to narrow down. You had this big cloud of all the kayaks out there that you could have gotten. You look at size, storage, budget, features. Now you're looking at a much smaller pool of kayaks to, to pull from. So budget. Right, that's an important part. That's a, that's a, it could be a sticking point for some people. Some people might want the biggest kayak, the best kayak, but maybe maybe you're, it's not in your budget to get such a kayak. So last, let's do number five. So we had so we went storage, size, features, budget. Lastly, number five, transport. How are you going to get your kayak from the house or wherever you're storing it to the water? Right, I got mine in, in a truck. That's what I do, on the bed of a truck. You guys saw in the intro, I move mine in the bed of the truck and that's how I get it around, right? But maybe you want a trailer, maybe you don't have a truck. Maybe you have a, you could hook up to a trailer and you could drag it that way. Again, you have to consider that when you look at the budget, right? Now you gotta buy a trailer on top of that. Maybe you have a car and you throw it and you have a rack. You could throw it on top of the rack. I've tried that, I didn't like it. I was beating up my old car. That's why I had to get a truck to support my fishing hobby, right? Throw the kayak in there. I had the kayak on top of the, 
on top of the car with the rack on there and it, it got beat up it, it didn't work that's for me but again i had a big kayak maybe if you have a smaller kayak once you've looked at those other those other top five considerations maybe it's a small kayak you could throw it on your car because you don't have a lot of storage area and, and it doesn't weigh a lot and you can just throw it up there bring it down and that's it so those are your top five from me storage size features budget and transport some things you're going to want to look at just in general right maybe not top five considerations but you're going to look at stability of them you're going to look at maintenance that could probably fall under features how much maintenance does it require so maybe maybe one with a pedal drive might require a little bit more maintenance than one that's just a pedal or with when you paddle right so maybe you don't want to do a lot of maintenance maybe you don't want to you don't want to worry about all that just throw it in there you get your paddle and you're out fishing right you don't want to have to worry about a rudder breaking you don't have to worry about those sort of things maybe I personally, I like the rudder. I like the pedal drive. That's just me. I'll add a little bit. If I got to do a little maintenance or whatever, that's okay. Because it saves me time doing the, with the, with the, with the pedal drive. Then you can start looking at brands. Once you've, once you've narrowed down your storage, your budget, your features, your, your size and transportation. Now you can really, now you've narrowed down and you can really decide, okay, based on these features, based on all these, these top five criteria, I'm looking at these types of kayaks. You got Nordman, what I have right here. You got Oh, there's all sorts of, of, of kayak brands out there, right? I like Norman. I like my Norman kayak. I got no issues with it. It's, it's perfect. It works for me. But you guys can get whatever you want, of course. It's open to, it's, uh, once you look at those considerations, those things that you got to start thinking about before you buy one, um, those will help shape the way you're looking at certain kayaks, whether or not they're functional, whether or not they, they suit your needs and your desires. So that's all I got for you guys. If you guys like the video, make sure you guys go down and subscribe, like, do all those things. Again, if you're on Facebook, you guys can go down to the, to the link in the description and the comments. Follow that to the Fishing Expat YouTube channel, which is me. And my name's Logan. And again, I hope you guys enjoy it. That is the top five considerations that you should probably start looking at when you're looking at buying a new or your first fishing kayak. Let's get it.